people meeting each other the old-fashioned way at weddings or through common friends may have taken a beating when compared to the swipe left, swipe right, instant hookup culture. But dating or courtship is one of those things that will never go out of fashion or lose its charm. Skipping the digital route of meeting your match, we have with us a young and dashing organizer in a hat, Dhruv Bhatt, in our studio, who is the event organizer for Hamtum, America's premier matrimony event, open to all South Asian singles. Welcome to our studio, Dhruv. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity you're giving us to get the word out there. Definitely. Of course. So talk about your event. Uh, so pretty much the event is we wanted to give a place for people to meet like-minded individuals in a comfortable, fun atmosphere. Uh, too many times a lot of courtship takes place on a phone or it takes place on a laptop or a computer and we really wanted to remove that and bring the beautiful aspects of that and the beautiful aspects of our traditional culture together and create a new medium for people to meet the right person for the future. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you working at a big tech company or printing money, you know, in the trade and stock market? <laughs> what is what is about love and dating that mm -hmm. really drew you to this event? So I noticed that there was definitely a need for change in the industry as a whole. Uh, that too many people were having bad experiences and too many people were having just negative impacts on their dating lives because of companies that handle marriage, matrimony, and handle dating. And so I wanted to make people feel comfortable again. Mm -hmm. And I wanted t the process to be fun again. But, but there are success stories with these matrimony sites also. What makes you, mm -hmm. you know, be a judge on like, maybe this is not the right path? Uh, so it's, it's not as much the success stories, it's more so the negatives that we hear. Mm -hmm. And such as, for example, with certain online mediums, they're being bot profiles. And uh -huh. then they're being six months of talking to somebody before you even meet them face to face. So mm -hmm. we're removing all of those factors that prevent people from being the truest version of themselves. Uh, in Bharat Matrimony or Shadi.com or Hinge or Tinder mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's definitely, in my, in my experience, I've seen that it's a lot, people are a lot more receptive to the people standing in front of them. And they're able to make a lot more organic decisions. Or do, is this somebody I want to continue seeing? Is this somebody that I could see myself with potentially six months from now in a live-in relationship or a year from now meeting my family in Baroda? and uh, uh, enjoying all the ma like marriage process of Mandy's and everything because it's mm -hmm. very important. And we see a lot of couples that aren't really meant to be together have clashes in the actual wedding process. Mm -hmm. So that's why we believe in embracing the negatives, which is not really something the traditional mediums that are available now do. And so we believe that our negatives make us who we are just as much as the positives. And mm -hmm. that's definitely a big factor when it comes to really appreciating someone for who they really are. Mm -hmm. And not just what they write in a profile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, but you would be doing background checks as well. And this is just for the dating event or, and, uh, or do you plan to take it one step further and uh, you know, maybe turn it into a matrimony kind of uh, affair? So it's definitely, as it's now, we definitely, our long-term goal is matrimony. A lot of the successful matches that we have made so far uh, ended up eventually getting engaged and married and even having kids. And, oh, really? Yeah, How so, long have you been doing it? So we've been doing it for, uh, I would say, like three years now, where, but we never did it ourselves. We mm -hmm. were always the organizers for religious organizations, nonprofits, and even private events. Mm -hmm. And so through that experience, we've been able to to cultivate our formula mm -hmm. which I believe is unique to us mm -hmm. and I believe that our candidates wouldn't be able to get that experience at another XYZ marriage matrimony company or marriage bureau mm -hmm. and so we, that's how we've definitely through those three years figuring out okay people respond to this people uh, feel like this is a bit too tedious and mm -hmm. through those little little changes I believe that we've created a formula that really helps people be themselves mm -hmm. and really helps people reveal their truest self. And essentially, if we boil down marriage 
it, it can be considered like an, two, a beautiful understanding between two individuals who are coming together as one. And to do that, like they both have to know each other 100%. Mm -hmm. So 100%. That's... Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we know that that's kind of like a fairy tale to be the 100%, mm. but we'll be happy with about 75. <laughs> that, that's, that's good. That's a good success rate. Talk about some success story. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some of your friends and some of the clients you helped, you know, get acquainted and now they have kids. So yes. tell me about some nice, sweet, maybe a fairy tale. Sure. Too good to be true, but it is true. So we had at the at an event in 2019, a family friend of mine, uh, he met this beautiful biochemist, uh, a biochemist engineer, I believe she was, mm -hmm. and they. He even told me that they would have never interacted had it not been for them sitting next to each other at the event. She was from a completely different world, and he was from a completely different world. And it's almost like a Disney, like a Disney love story, where like two people from different walks of life, different experiences, different industries. The the man was finance, the woman was in like biochemistry, mm -hmm. and they just interacted, and little by little they talked, and then they went out to dinner, and the next thing you know, two years later or a year later, they were engaged, and a year later, I was invited to their wedding. Oh. And it was a, one of the most beautiful weddings I've ever seen. And just seeing, it was the first groom I've ever seen dance during his feira. I've never seen a groom <laughs> just break down into dance. He was so happy that he, he had so to, happy. he couldn't contain himself and he yeah. had to dance. Like, <laughs> yeah. wow. What and was, was the song, do you remember? I, it was, I think it was just the Swami chanting. Like the Swami was just saying his mantras and he was just dancing he, he a lot. He was to dancing on that? Yeah, that's how oh happy he was. And even the girl, like I remember talking to her and she shared with me a lot of the negative experiences that she's had with other potential life partners. Mm -hmm. And she was very, she, she even admitted herself just as much as the man did that we would have probably never met if we were in a bar in New York City or if we came onto each other's profile and hinge, we would have probably never even took this step where we said hi to each other and we asked each other, oh, what's your favorite color? What's your motivation? What's mm -hmm. your favorite music? And so they were, we were able to give them a medium to really discuss these intimate things that are nowadays done mostly through text messages. Mm -hmm. And so it really changes the vibe between two people when they have that in-person interaction compared to like mm -hmm. uh, an interaction on a phone. Mm -hmm. So when I go to a restaurant and there is like a buffet for me, I get indecisive. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going next, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So too many people, too many choices. Does it get too overwhelming for people or maybe they don't want to come out of the comfort zone? Mm -hmm. So I have noticed that, that at the events that I've personally been a candidate at, uh, that some events have almost three, four hundred people. Wow. And that is very overwhelming. So our philosophy definitely is, is that we want to present to you high quality matches, more so than the quantity of matches. So before a candidate even arrives at the event, based off of the consultation that we give them and the conversations that we have with them, we have about two or three matches that we think would suit them. Uh -huh. And so it really narrows down and the activities and icebreakers that we'll be doing at the event, that will also help them narrow down the, cr the crowd, as well as the physical booklet. They'll be able to use it as some sort of a guidebook and a reference that this mm -hmm. person is, I fancy this person a little bit more, so let me ha make the effort to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And we go as far as even allowing people to approach us and we'll be the ones that approach the other person for you. Whereas I'm like that, I'm a very shy person. So if mm -hmm. I could have a friend uh, start, create the first impression for me, that would be great. Mm -hmm. So definitely like we, want to cover all the grounds when it comes to making feel com people feel comfortable because it is very overwhelming yeah. being at an all-you-can-eat buffet and there's a hundred different kinds of sushi <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I just wanted sushi. I didn't... <laughs> so mm -hmm. we definitely keep that in mind. So talking about the book, you mentioned that there is going to be a booklet. Is there a book that you have read on love or something that you swear by or something that, you know, you've got like, you know, notes Mm -hmm. You know, you've jotted down something and yeah. that's something you live by or swear mm -hmm. by? Uh, I 
can't remember the author at the moment, but one of those books is The Five Languages of Love. Wow. Uh, the overarching message of that book really is that we're, there may be 8 billion people in the world, but we're all individuals. We, have, we all have our quirks. We all have our own experiences that make us unique. So because of that, uh, I believe that book is a good guide to being adapt like to being adaptable mm -hmm. and to be able to be like, okay, yes, this person in front of me isn't my carbon copy. As much as we have in carbon, they can potentially have a different language of love than I do. So it's important for me to adapt and it's important for me to be understanding. And so I believe that when there is that shared understanding between two individuals, the partnership is just so much more beautiful because they're able to express themselves and they're able to be comfortable and and not be fearful that, oh, is this person going to misunderstand me or misunderstand my language of love. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely worth the read. I just, I can't remember the author mm -hmm. <laughs> at the wow. moment. So you must have dated a bunch of women, right? <laughs> I don't know if I should say that on the record, but mm -hmm. I have. I have had several mm -hmm. experiences with uh, Indian women, with mm -hmm. Spanish women. Yeah, so I was I, about to ask mm -hmm. uh, which ethnicity is hardest to please and which is the easiest <laughs> and easy going i definitely think across the board it's just it's very dependent on the person like i've had like i've dated indian women that are very easy to please and same thing with spanish women then i've also dated the opposite of that from both ethnicities so I think like the benefit of me having this experience is that I'm really able to understand the female candidates mm. uh, because uh, it's sometimes the problem is is that a man can't relate to a woman and a woman can't relate to a man. So I think the benefit of me uh, being this way and hoping my mom doesn't find out. <laughs> <laughs> or your girlfriend, you have yeah, one, right? Yeah. <laughs> or my girlfriend not finding out is that I definitely... I can relate and I've mm -hmm. had I've had female candidates approach me and say hey what am I doing wrong or mm -hmm. what can I be doing better oh. and I'm able to use my personal experiences to be like maybe look at things from this person's perspective walk a mile in their shoes mm -hmm. or don't be too hard on yourself because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and mm -hmm. which is great uh, for the women candidates just as much as the male candidates because I could bring best of both worlds mm -hmm. for them. Okay, talk about the dating etiquettes. What are the do's and don'ts of dating? So I think uh, the biggest don't uh, is to, the biggest do is to ask somebody what their pet peeves are. And the biggest don't is not doing those things. And mm -hmm. so uh, I've noticed that in relationships and marriages that don't work, a lot of times it's what the reasons people fell in love with the person is what makes them resentful yeah. towards the back end. So I definitely think the most important thing is like understanding and knowing that this person has had their own share of experiences. They've had their own negative experiences and they have their own memories with family and friends and dating. So when people understand that, the mm -hmm. expectations start getting lower mm -hmm. because it's really our own expectations that disappoint us. Mm -hmm. So the and that's probably the biggest mantra too is that don't expect anything. Just go with the flow when it comes to dating and marriage. Because if we lay marriage out marriage also go with the flow. Oh, before <laughs> marriage. <laughs> after marriage, I'm not too sure. Yet. I just have the data. So of no what responsibility I'm after marriage. <laughs> no, there'll be there's a more disclaimer. Responsibility. Yeah, disclaimer. Be responsible in marriage. <laughs> So when you see like, um, you know, a dating event, it's still a very controlled environment. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to worry who's going to pay the bill, you know, after the food. There's probably no yeah. food and there's no like a, a proper table where two people are sitting. Mm -hmm. But when you go outside, do you already know like who's going to pay? Like you, you come to know the person that well, like who's going to foot the bill? Uh, so. Pretty much we want to establish that like men and women are kind of equals, right? Mm. So we we would we tell people like, hey, it's it's all 50-50. Uh, the man shouldn't expect anything from paying for dinner and the woman shouldn't expect dinner being paid for, especially now with all of the big, like strong, powerful, career oriented like Indian women in our community, right? So I definitely think, and so we, what we do differently with the matrimony event is that we, 
give people an opportunity to say, okay, is this somebody that I would even like to go mm. on a date with? Can I see myself uh, mm -hmm. being at John George in New York City uh, on Valentine's Day with this person? And that's really the emotions that we want to incite in people is that, no, this is somebody that I really want to take to Broadway shows and mm. take ice skating and take to an escape room. Mm -hmm. So we want to create that when it comes to like the dating before matrimony, mm -hmm. because it's very important to have those few months of getting to know each other and testing the water and stuff for sure. So, so tell me, when you start dating, you might be in a shopping state of mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do you like, can you date multiple people or mm -hmm. no at the same time? I think with the way the world is now, that if there isn't any commitment, then we're always going to window shop. Personally, like when I go to purchase a car, I'll know what car I want, but I'll check five different dealerships for it. And so I feel like... Especially, it's okay. It, it's not yeah. okay. I've, once some sort of exclusivity. Oh, sorry. So sorry. It's okay. Once some sort of exclusivity gets involved and people talk like, okay, I think we should be exclusive. I think it should just be you and I. Then I think, okay, both people are serious enough to not see other people. But until then, I don't think any man or woman should feel like it's wrong to test your options kind of thing. Uh, because that's just the nature of how we are. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that's why we sample stuff before we choose a caterer for like mm -hmm. a wedding and stuff. So because we always want to know, is this the best option? And just us as like like us as a species, we're just very indecisive. Like I know when it comes to like watching what I want to watch at night, it'll take me three hours to pick a two-hour movie because <laughs> I'm going through HBO Max, Hulu, mm -hmm. Prime Video, Netflix, like the whole nine yards. And that is very overwhelming. <laughs> like it's supposed to be a fun experience. Mm -hmm. So we all know, like uh, you know, sometimes you're interested, sometimes you're not. But mm -hmm. what are the telltale signs that it's a bad date? And mm -hmm. if you know if somebody was at your dating event, can they switch partners? Like, mm -hmm. is it okay without yeah. feeling guilty? So we think that it, it it definitely is okay. Like we want everybody to keep their options open. We definitely don't want somebody to get married and then still reach out to another one of, of the course. candidates. But we definitely want people to keep their options open. That's why at the event itself, you'll be given a prompt to choose three to five people who you would like to. We don't just say pick the one person. So we we want we promote people having the options. How as, do you choose? Like mm -hmm. based on looks, based on personality traits? So it's based really on, those are very big factors. Looks, of course, is the biggest. And that's why we want uh, people that come to the event to look their best, be the best version of themselves. Wow. It's like grooming and uh, proper hygiene and stuff, as well as like dieting and exercise. Like that also goes a long way. And then personality as well. And another big factor is also understanding another person's personality like we especially in the corporate world tend to get very hard-headed and very get, become very set in our ways and it works for corporate america but it definitely doesn't work in the dating game mm -hmm. or the ma marriage game so mm -hmm. we definitely and so it's totally okay if a candidate speaks to one candidate for a week and then talks to another week or even if they're talking to both candidates throughout that week uh, it's definitely when they do pick someone, the negative experiences they have with other people are just going to strengthen the adoration and affection they have towards that one person, for mm -hmm. sure. So it's it, it's definitely a lot of people, especially uh, with the old school kind of Indian mentality, might not get mm. it. But I feel like it's really a healthy thing because it promotes it promotes freedom. It promotes like mm. us not being forced to make a pick. Mm -hmm. more so having choices that we can mm -hmm. pick from. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to me about your dating event, like the kind of games or prompts you mentioned. Sure. How does it make it like fun mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, maybe I would want to consider that kind of a mm -hmm. feeling for anyone? So we, we, our philosophy and our approach is that we want the process to be very self-reflective. So we believe that if the more a person knows themselves and is happy with themselves, the more they'll be able to make a person around them happy. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, it's the activities are structured in a way where you'll get to know more about yourself as well as getting to know about more about the people in the room and there'll be similar activities to, uh, for example like finding somebody who has this trait finding somebody who enjoys this specific genre of music or finding somebody who shares a similar horoscope sign to you oh. so it's really top to bottom just ways for people to open themselves up and then get to know about other people as mm -hmm. well. Because those are all questions that are gonna be asked on a first date anyway. So we may as well expedite that into the, like we call it the zero date, which mm -hmm. is the date before the date. <laughs> so it, it feels like a date, but it's not the first official date. Mm -hmm. Tell me, did you watch that show, that Seema Auntie's matchmaking show yeah. on Netflix? What did you think I definitely of that? watched it. I, I'm. Not a big fan of it. I'm a fan of the cinematography and the way it's made and stuff, but... And the big fat wedding, so grand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Simanti, I've personally, I've not to badmouth any, any of my competitors, mm -hmm. but I've spoken to people who have used her service oh. and it's not what we see on TV. Uh, it's, and then that too, like she was a very traditional, she took a very traditional approach. Like for one example, one of the guys on the show, his father was in jail or he had gone to jail and Simanti said like, oh, this is going to be difficult. It's a stigma in our oh. community. Whereas had he come to me, I would have been like, don't worry. We're not, we're not who our parents are kind of thing. We're our own individuals. And mm -hmm. the people we're associated with, their choices, shouldn't affect the trajectory of our lives. That's so true. And so it was really Simanti, which was one of the biggest inspirations for me to really? detach and be like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have like a full-blown company to do this instead of just organizing the events. Because I've, I heard a lot, and just in the industry as a whole, uh, out of almost 100 candidates, that I've signed up, I would say 95% of them have had some bad experience with a matchmaker or a bureau oh. and stuff. And I really wanted to fix that in the industry mm -hmm. because there are stories of people being charged $1,000 and only getting two matches in a oh. year, like one in India, one here. And so we wanted to just straighten the whole industry out. And so hopefully we could start with Simanti. <laughs> so, so the price for one, you get to see how many people or you can date how many people. So with the entry to our event, you yeah. get potentially 50 to 75 people wow. of the opposite sex that you're uh, interacting with. And we've, as of now, we have about 100 people, uh, give or take. And we have about a 55 to 45 ratio. So we have slightly more women than men mm -hmm. right now, which is an anomaly. It's unheard of at these events. Usually it's like a 60-40 ratio with there being more men. So mm -hmm. we've done a good job to really close that gap and make it fair for everybody, man mm -hmm. and woman. Mm -hmm. So I wish you all the best. And we all know that our time is limited on this earth. This doesn't stop us from living. There will be ups and downs. There'll be sleepless nights and there certainly will be heartbreaks. One needs to get out of one's comfort zone and take a chance because at the end of our journey, the only regrets we will end up with are the chances we didn't take when we had a chance. Mm. So come out there, all you beautiful single South Asian singles, and go for the event. And it is called? Uh, the event is called Hum Tum, and it's on March 11th and 12th of 2022 at the E Hotel in Edison, New Jersey. Ladies, throw is sadly taken, but <laughs> you will have lots of opportunities. Lots, for sure. Thank you for joining us, Thank Throb. You so All much. the best. Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you, ITV Gold.